Hello, welcome back. One of my all-time favorite scriptures is Job 23 and verse 10. But he knows the way that I take, and when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Are you going through a personal crisis right now? And like Job, does it feel like you're losing everything? Today, I want to encourage you to be just like Job and keep on moving forward in your walk of faith. And even if all around seems dark and daunting, Kong has a very encouraging word for you today about God being our divine goldsmith. God is very much acquainted with you and with all that you are going through. And just as fire strengthens metal, God is strengthening you through your personal trials. Don't lose hope because there is an eternal purpose for your trial. Now, before I get into the word, let's open our hearts to the Lord as we enter into a time of worship. Promises mean much to each of us, and we all value those who keep their promises to us. The promises of God are yes and amen. Every good gift that He has prepared for you is irrevocable. It will never return to Him void. It will always be fulfilled in your life. Kong and Son have put together a collection of promises from God's Word called Irrevocable. To receive your copy of Irrevocable, please visit konghee.com. These unchanging promises will give you the encouragement and hope you need to face the challenges of life. 
help Kong continue to reach a world that needs this powerful truth. Again, please visit the website to order your copy from Kong He Ministries. Look for the offer, Irrevocable, Promises from God directly for your life today. God has given each of us promises to comfort, encourage, and bring joy even during the most troubling times. Visit konghee.com to get your copy of Irrevocable. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. I want to start by going to James chapter 5 and verse 11. And can we just all read this verse together from the New Living Translation? Let's all read together. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. So the Bible says that Job was a blameless an upright man. He was one who feared God and shunned away from evil. In fact, Job was in the prime of his life. He was the richest, the purest, the most blessed, the most admired man of his time. God loved Job very much. But yet, God wanted Job to really be complete and mature in his faith and in total trust and abandonment to Him. If you trust God, you must totally abandon yourself into His care. So God allowed Job to be tested. He allowed Satan, the devil, to persecute him. Let me tell you, City Harvest, nothing ever will happen to you, will happen to me, without the permission of God. In one day, Job lost everything. What did he lose? In one day, he lost his entire business. All his property was gone. All his assets was gone. He became so poor, he had to live in a city dump. In one day, his seven sons and three daughters, all grown up with their families, they were killed in a freak storm. In one day. You know, in one day, he got so sick. How sick was he? He was filled with sores over his body. The Bible says worms were eating his flesh and coming out of his body. Some scholars believe he had leprosy. Others said the symptoms clearly showed that he had cancer. Job was so pathetic. His own wife said to him, why don't you just curse God and die? Why was Job able to be so strong? Because in Job 23 and verse 10, Job says, God knows the way I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. And the word to be tested means to be refined through fire. You know, God is the divine goldsmith. So one thing goldsmith does is that when they want to clean something precious, they take a brush and they will clean every nook and every corner. But you know you can clean gold on the outside with soap and water. But if you want to clean gold on the inside, there is only one way. It got to be purified through fire. It got to be refined through fire. You know, to purify gold, the goldsmith have to put it in the middle of the fire because that's the hottest spot. Only then could the impurities all come to the surface so that the goldsmith could skim it off. Each time the gold goes through the fire, it comes out better, it comes out purer. And it's the same with silver. The silversmith will hit the silver again and again, and yet again, the Bible says, sometimes seven times in the fire. Why? He wants the silver to be so pure, he will only stop when he could see his own reflection on the silver. And let me tell you this exactly what Paul says in the Bible, that God purifies us until the image of Christ is formed in us. How many of you want to be like Jesus? You see, and that is the whole purpose. God wants to see Jesus in us. God wants to see King Jesus form in our lives. You know, fire strengthens metal. 
And then that's why when Jesus said, Simon, Simon, let me tell you, Satan has come to sift you as wheat. In other words, you are going to go through strong fire. You're going to go through a difficult time of suffering. But don't be discouraged. I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you return, you can strengthen your brothers. In other words, before the difficult times, Simon Peter have no strength to help anybody. But once he have gone through the furnace of affliction, he was able to strengthen all the rest of the disciples. One man that have gone through the fire of suffering was Gideon. And this week, the Lord really spoke to me about Gideon and his people. For seven years, the Israelites were oppressed by the Midianites. Seven years! The Midianites had a very powerful army, 135,000 well-armed, well-trained troops. And besides them, you have the Amalekites. So for the people of God, in the book of Judges, they were going through an impossible time. An impossible time. Anyway, Gideon rallied the people, 32,000 men came to him. How many? 32,000. They came to him. Well, it was still less than one quarter of the strength of the Midianites. But many of them were afraid. So God said, tell whoever that is fearful and afraid, go home. Well, Gideon thought, surely most of the men are with me, right? Maybe only a handful, a few dozens may go back home. To his surprise, he said, all those that are fearful, you can go home. 22,000 went home that day. <laughs> Somebody said, wow. He was left with 10,000 men. Well, God said 10,000 is still too many. So God introduced the water test, the water test. Gideon brought the 10,000 men to a drinking spring. Uh, that means a spring, a hot spring where they could drink the water. God said, those who are hasty, those who are careless and impulsive, send them home. Well, guess how many were sent home that day? 9,700 were sent home because they were not alert, they were careless, and they were hasty. Gideon was left with only 300 men. Now, you can say aloud, wow, this time. Yeah. How many? 300 men. They were those who left the water like a dog would lap the water. <laughs> they lap the water, drinking it like a dog. When I read about this, I cannot help but to go to the gospel in the Gospel of Matthew, there was a Syrophoenician woman whose daughter was sick. And she came to Jesus crying and begging, Jesus, please heal my daughter. She's possessed with a demonic spirit. Now, one would have thought that Jesus would readily say, sure, it will be my pleasure. But Jesus said something really amazing. Jesus said, I can't do it. I can't take the children's bread, the healing, and throw it to dogs like you. Wow. Jesus Christ was calling this woman with a great need, a dog. In her suffering, any woman would have been offended by a statement like this. Jesus, I come to you in good faith. I come to you with my need in desperation for the healing of my daughter. Not only are you not wanting to heal, you call me a dog? She could have been offended, but she wasn't. Instead, she replied, yes, Lord, yes. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Look at her attitude. She was saying, Jesus, I accept I'm a nobody. I accept, you're right, I'm a dog. 
I accept, I need you. And only you can help us. Only you can deliver and heal my daughter. Jesus was so moved by the humility of this woman. She said, oh woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. And right at the instant, this woman's daughter was healed. Will you give God a big clap right now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What was the attitude? One of humility. This is how we should be. Humble, loving, faithful. And humility brings with it great strength. Gideon's 300 men, mind you, was less than 1% of the original army he had. Less than 1%. And to face 135,000 meter knights is an impossible situation. I can tell you sometimes we feel we are in an impossible situation. But yet God said, by the 300 men who left, I will save you. In other words, by a generation of Christians who understand humility, I'm going to show my mighty salvation. Humility is tremendous, tremendous strength. Church, it doesn't matter if you tonight are in a seemingly impossible situation in your life, in your marriage, in your finances, in your job, maybe in your ministry, just humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Keep loving Him. Keep worshiping Him. Keep humbling yourself and trust Him and be faithful to Him. And God promises He's going to exalt you. He's going to promote you. He's going to lift you up in due season. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Sometimes we feel like Gideon. Gideon came before God and said, God, if you are with us, why are all these things happening? Where are all his miracles? Gideon asked. The Lord has forsaken them. The Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. God said, no, Gideon, don't talk like that. Change your confession. Change the way you talk. The Lord is with you. You are a mighty man of valor. So 300 men went to face 135,000 Midianites. Impossible situation. It was in the middle of the night, great darkness everywhere. So the men divided themselves into three groups. Three different groups. One over here, one over there, one on the other side. Suddenly, it's a very unusual battle strategy. <laughs> with one hand, they took out a trumpet. With the other hand, they took out a jar, and inside, there's a torch. I mean, they took out those two things. And then they sounded the trumpet. And let me tell you, it's, they didn't just shout, whoo. <laughs> They, those were ram's horn. It was a loud blast. And then they broke the pitcher and revealed the torch in their hands, the light. And you got to understand one thing. All spiritual battles, you read the Bible, all spiritual battles are psychological. They are psychological. So here were the Midianites. They heard the sound of the blast of the trumpet. They were awakened from their sleep. So they woke up. What's happening? What's happening? And they rubbed their eyes, and their eyes were blurry. And they looked in the midst of darkness, they saw torches of flame, and they heard the sound of trumpet. They thought to themselves, OMG, <laughs> the Israelites have come with a million troops. There were only how many? 300 men. There are millions of them. They took the dagger under their bed. They start stabbing people on their left, on their right, because they couldn't see. And then the smell of blood was everywhere. They thought, oh no, the Israelites are here. They're killing all of us. And they started killing one another. All Gideon and the man did 
or simply blow the trumpet and shine the torch. And within an hour, all of them killed themselves and God gave them a great victory. Listen, again and again, Jesus tells us, do not be afraid. Don't lose in this psychological thing in your spirit and in your mind. Only believe. And if you believe, you will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. Choose faith, not fear. Go ahead and give the Lord a big clap. Think about positive thoughts, biblical thoughts. Don't allow fear to grip your mind. Let the Holy Spirit show you His visions and His dreams. Your young man shall see visions. Your old man shall dream the dreams of God. Believe in what the Bible says. Believe in the Word. Heaven and earth will pass away. All the promises of God will by no means pass away. And keep speaking out the promises of God in your prayers, in your conversations, in your confessions. The Word of God is already inspired by the Holy Spirit. When you speak the words of God with your mouth, it is as powerful as God speaking it with His mouth. And every word that you speak will come to pass. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Our thoughts, our visions and dreams, our faith, our confession, these are our spiritual weapons. That night in Judges chapter 7, the Midianites thought Gideon had came with a million soldiers, but there were only 300 men. But 300 who are full of faith, totally humble before God. One more thing. They were totally united as a people. They shouted with one voice, the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. I tell you, they could easily say, the sword of the Lord, and who cares about Gideon? <laughs> and I tell you, look, if you read the story of Gideon, he's not the most perfect man around. <laughs> you know, well, I can walk with God. Mm hmm, I'm not so sure about the leadership. Listen, leaders are not perfect. But God uses His leaders to advance the purposes of His kingdom. A house divided against itself will not stand. So no matter how much Satan attacks us from the outside, it's not going to break up the church. But there's only one thing that can destroy us, and that's disunity. That's why the Bible says of the seven things God hates, in Proverbs chapter 6, the seven things God hates, the one He hates the most is the one who sowed discord and doubts and sowed disunity among the people. The Bible says in Proverbs 7, it's abomination before God. On this anniversary, let's make up our mind. A home divided against itself will not stand, so we are not going to have division in our home. A marriage divided against itself will not stand, so we are not going to have disunity in our marriage. A cell group divided against itself will not stand, so we are not going to have disunity in our cell group. And we will never allow disunity to fester in City Harvest Church. We will not allow it because there's a house of God and we're going to stand as a people of God. Like Gideon, you may be thinking, if the Lord is with me, why then has all this happened to me? And where are all His miracles? But God is saying to you, change your confession. Change the way you talk. The Lord is with you. You are a mighty man or woman of valor. God is working behind the scenes of your life and setting you up for your greatest miracle. Like how Kong has shared, all spiritual battles are firstly psychological. Choose faith, not fear. 
I believe that you will win all your spiritual battles in your thoughts, in your heart, through your faith and by your confession. Right now, I want you to activate your faith in God as you confess this prayer with me. Dear Father God, You are the potter and I am your clay. You know the way that I take, so I pray that you will show me your way. Grant me the grace to go through every trial. Refine me as you walk with me through the fire. Use every experience that I go through and let my life bring you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Promises mean much to each of us. And we all value those who keep their promises to us. The promises of God are yes and amen. Every good gift that He has prepared for you is irrevocable. It will never return to Him void. It will always be fulfilled in your life. Kong and Son have put together a collection of promises from God's Word called Irrevocable. To receive your copy of Irrevocable, please visit konghee.com. These unchanging promises will give you the encouragement and hope you need to face the challenges of life. Help Kong continue to reach a world that needs this powerful truth. Again, please visit the website to order your copy from Kong He Ministries. Look for the offer Irrevocable, promises from God directly for your life today. God has given each of us promises to comfort, encourage, and bring joy even during the most troubling times. Visit konghee.com to get your copy of Irrevocable. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. We hope you have been blessed by the Word today. It is our constant prayer that your life and your personal walk with God will be strengthened through a life with Kong. We also want you to pray with us as we bring the gospel of Jesus throughout the world. There is a great revival at hand, and your prayers can make a big difference. Take care, and God bless. Bye.